Hi everyone. So as promised, I'm going to upload the second video of interpretation of financial statements. In the first part of interpretation of financial statement, I have discussed the most important thing, how you have to present your answer. You have to use tables, you have to show your calculations. You have to state the reason why there is an increase or decrease in a ratio with respect to a given scenario. And in part one, we also went through what are the normal uh, types or different types of ratio analysis questions that will be asked. So they will normally ask you to compare with previous year, compare with industry average, compare to organization for the purpose of acquisition, then consolidation with an acquisition, consolidation with a disposal. And I told you in my part two video, I'll be uploading how to interpret ROCE. So I'm going to teach you how you have to interpret a return on capital employed. And this discussion will be with the help of past question papers. So before going to interpretation of ROCE, in my part one video, I also told you the best way to present your answer, apart from showing calculations on table, apart from showing calculations, apart from stating the reason why there's an increase or decrease with respect to relevant case scenarios. There are two more things uh, you have to remember how to present. It has been discussed in part one. So one thing is that you write it in a headings, give heading. So profitability ratio, liquidity ratio, position ratios, or gearing ratio, and write in two or three paragraphs. So let's quickly look into what are the profitability ratios, ROCE, net asset turnover, gross profit margin, and operating margin. So this is actually part two of interpretation of financial statement. So in part two, we will be discussing how to interpret ROCE. And in part three, which I'll be uploading quite soon, we'll be discussing how we, you have to interpret net asset turnover. And in part number four, I'll be explaining how you have to interpret gross profit margin and operating margin. And in part number five, I'll be uploading how you have to interpret liquidity ratio and gearing ratio. I'll be taking ROCE and gross profit and operating margin in detail with the help of past question papers. So let's start to learn how you have to interpret return on capital employed. Once again, welcome to my channel, Learn with Basil Nilambra. I'm Basil Nilambra, tutor for financial reporting at Kaplan School of Accountancy and Management. So how you have to interpret ROCE? Before that, you have to know the formula for ROCE. So the formula for ROC is PBIT, profit before interest on tax, interest and tax, divided by capital employed. This PBIT is certain question they will show, say it is operating profit. So you simply take operating profit. No need to find out capital employed if operating profit is given in the question. If so, just take, just substitute this formula as operating cap profit divided by capital employed. Now, if ROC increases, there can be only two reasons. What you have to understand is that the relationship with a ratio and its numerator are directly proportional. That means a ratio will increase when numerator increase. So if ROC increase, it means its numerator PBIT has increased. Now, all you have to do is that go and read the scenario and pick out from the scenario the reasons why there was an increase in PBIT. And the relationship between a ratio and its numerator are inversely related. So if a ratio has increased, it can be either due to increase in the numerator or decrease in the denominator. 
Now simply don't write PBIT has increased or capital employed has decreased. What you really have to do is that read the scenario and identify why PBIT has increased or why capital employed has decreased and write that reason, pick out that reason from the scenario. You'll be getting one mark for that. It is as simple as that. Your answer need not be exactly as BPP answer or Kaplan answer or even ACCA past answer. You do this. This is as per examiner's report. If you do this, you will score maximum marks. Now, similarly, if ROC has decreased, as you know right now, if a ratio decreases, as I stated earlier, the relationship between numerator and ratio are directly. So if ROC has decreased or if any ratio has decreased, it means numerator has decreased. So PBI, if ROC decreases, then the reason is that maybe a decrease in PBIT. And the relationship between the ratio and its denominator is inversely related. That means if ratio decreases, the numerator increase. So just remember this particular thing of ROCE. You can pass your examination. But simply don't write, don't commit this to mistake. This mistake has been committing by students in spite of ACCA examiner's report warning and explicitly state that you will be getting zero mark. What are the mistakes that students commit? They say like they write like this what they do right. Certain students write this point, ROCE of previous year was 20 percentage, this year it is 25 percentage, it has increased, zero marks. Yes, when you read BPP question or when you read BPP revision gate or Kaplan revision gate or ACCA answer, it will be there. You have to state it anyway, but there is no mark on that. But students think that after reading BBP, after reading Kaplan, after reading ACCA answer script, they think that if we write this point, there has been an increase or decrease, we'll get mark. No, it has been explicitly stated in the examiner's report, ACCA examiner's report, which is available in ACCA website that you won't get any marks at all. There is also a technical article on how you have to write the answers of interpretation of financial statements. It has been explicitly stated that if you write increase or decrease, there is no absolutely no mark, but you will have to write it anyway, but there is no mark score on it. So remember that point. Then certain students who ha have attended my classes, in spite of me reminding them, they also used to commit this mistake. What is that mistake they commit? They will write, second point, ROC has decreased because PBIT has decreased or because as you can see here, opposite, capital employed, the denominator has increased. No marks, students. No marks for writing this as well. No marks. Then so how we can score mark? Write a reason, my dear students. If ROC has decreased, yes, it is due to decrease in PBIT. But this is your thinking process. This is how you have to think. This is how you have to think. But PBIT, what you have to do is you have to read the scenario and find out why PBIT has decreased. You have to read the scenario and find out why capital employed has increased. So I hope you have understood how you have to interpret ROCE. <clears throat> Sorry. And you can also state the percentage increase or decrease. So if it has increased from 20 to 25 percentage, say, so this is current year, this is previous year, and this is current year. So there has been a 5 percentage increase. It's not actually 5. It has been increased by 5 by 20 because 5 is the increase and you're comparing it previous year. So divide 5 by 25. I think it is 25 or whatever ratio, whatever answer you write, write it in the percentage. So this is the most important one. You have to write the reason why PBIT has increased or decreased or why capital employed has increased or decreased from the scenario. 
from the scenario, find out the reason for increase or decrease of PBIT and capital employed. So that's all my dear students with this video and I'll be uploading next part and in next part, I will be practicing past question papers of December 2019. And we will learn how you have to interpret ROCE. We'll be also doing September, December 2017 question, December 2008 question, December 2009 question, December 2012 question, and June 2014 question, and September, December 2019 question as well as September, December 2018 question, September 2016 question. So we'll be practicing at least around seven to eight or even eight to nine past question papers. We'll be going through eight to nine past question papers and apply this thing that you have learned. Now, what you have learned, you have learned a few things. Point number one, if a ratio increase, it can be due to increase in numerator or decrease in denominator. Or if a ratio decrease, it can be due to a decrease in numerator or increase in denominator. That means ratio and numerator are directly proportional and ratio and denominator are inversely proportional. And when you interpret ROCE, examiner is not interested whether you say it has increased or decreased or whether you say PBIT has increased or decreased, or whether you say capital employed has increased or decreased, you will get zero marks for that. Then what, how examiner will, what is the point you have to write to get that mark? You have to write why PBIT has increased or decreased, why capital employed has increased or decreased from this scenario. So we will be discussing those eight to nine question papers on how to interpret ROCE and it will include almost every type of ACCA questions that you can expect with respect to ROCE. That this eight to nine question papers will include will include all those five type of questions which we'll discuss in part number one. That means this questions I will teach you how you have to interpret ROCE when there is when you're comparing with previous year, when you're comparing with industry average, when you are comparing two organization for the purpose of acquisition, or when you're comparing consolidated financial statement, when there was an acquisition and when there was a disposal. So make sure to subscribe this channel and get your notification bar on so that you will, notif you will be notified when I upload my next class. So see you on my next video on how to interpret ROC with the help of eight to nine past ACCA question papers. Thank you everyone for watching watching this and all the best for your upcoming ACC examination. See you soon in next video. Goodbye.